This video is brought to you by Triple Sleeve TCG. Check out their website at triplesleevetcg.com. Hey guys, welcome back to another deck profile. Richard here, and I'm going to be showing you my Hexorb Sorceress deck profile because I got a Keter split and I might as well make a deck profile and build the deck and get rid of it as soon as possible because <laughs> this deck is overall not that great. But um, hopefully in due time, there will be some support. But I feel like if you did want to build a Hex Orb Sorceress deck, I feel like this would be a great way to build it. And of course, you guys can leave some comments or uh, ideas in the comment section below because I'm struggling with trying to figure out the right way to build this deck. But this is the best way that I've come up with so far. So going right into the ride deck, uh, I got... Our starter is going to be the Triconnect Sorceress because, you know, we're going to go with the uh, the theme here of the Sorceresses. Um, uh, next we got the Tear Square Sorceress. So the first skill is when this unit is written upon by Pentagleam Sorceress. You can kind of blast and draw a card. The second skill is not that great in my opinion just from playtesting. Uh, it's auto once per turn. When you drive, check reveals a trigger. You can count us one. Choose one of your opponent's front row rear guards and you put it on the bottom of their deck. I don't really know how effective board control really is in overdress format, but I just know that it feels like it doesn't really do much since it seems like almost every deck can kind of rebuild the field very generously. I might be wrong about that, but I would say that I feel like the only thing that this that skill might be good against is if you're playing against um, Dragon Empire and they got their um, overdress units, you know, you can send them to the bottom of the deck if they can even be targeted by card effects, which I don't know off the top of my head. So um, that would be the only thing that I would see it as effective as. So other than that, if you don't really think about those kind of plays, the rest of the skills don't really seem that important to me. So, but yeah, it's there. The grade two for the ride deck is Pentagleam Sorceress. So Pentagleam Sorceress is when it's uh, uh, when this unit is written upon by Hexorb Sorceress. You'll get a top three, and you can rearrange the top three in any order you want. Put them back on the top of your deck. So it's cool to set up for triggers. So that's really good. The other skill is when it's placed on rearguard circle. You can look at the top card of your deck, put it on the top or the bottom, and if you put it on the bottom, this gets two K. So it's a really easy, simple deck manipulation. That's kind of as good as it gets in the deck, so you got to appreciate it, what you got. Next up, for the right deck, we got our main grade 3, which is Hexorb Sorceress. Uh, when your drive check reveals a trigger, you can choose one of your rear guard, one of your other rear guards, and it gets 10k. So you can double up on triggers. This skill is act once per turn. If you have Persona, Persona Road this turn, you can have a Soul Blast, and you reveal a crit or front from your hand. Put it on top of your deck, and then you can do triple drive. So you're guaranteed a trigger, for the most part. Um, but it seems kind of like how I feel is that that's really as good as you're going to get with the deck manip manipulation unless you pull the grade 1 and the 2 to set up for that Persona ride turn. And you also have to you know have some triggers going at the top of your deck. And you just got to really make the most out of that turn. So it's decent. But overall, I would say it's like, that's that's as good as it gets, and it's not guaranteed that often for the whole game. But, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good skill, but it just needs a lot of support. That's, that's the main issue. Okay, on to the grade 3s. We're running our three other copies of Hexorb Sorceress. So, you know, you want to you wanna Persona Ride, so we got three more copies of that. On to the next of the grade threes, we're bringing in some of the Bastion support. So when this is placed on a rearguard circle, you can have blast one, soul blast one, call a card from your hand uh, to rear, and if you call the grade three, you draw two cards. So this is to help kind of filter through your hand, build a hand, because you know, having a hand in Vanguard is great. The other skill is when this attacks, if you have three or more grade threes, it gets 5k. So this deck is going to run a lot of grade threes as well, so your front row will most likely have grade threes, so this second skill still goes off um but it's mostly there just because um you might not find yourself counter blasting that often you just kind of need a hand just, just to go with so aiden does help with that so i do recommend running aiden 
Next up, since we are counterblasting a lot, this guy, great card. Knight of the War damage, Fasado. So Fasado's skill is, first skill is it cannot be chosen by your opponent's card effects, so it's really nice that it can protect itself. Uh, the other skill is when it attack hits, you counter charge soul charge. So this is really cool because it works when you swing against rear guards. So if you just want to damage deny your opponent, but still uh, get some resources off, this can apply a lot of pressure. Really, really, really good card. Um, I might up it to four just because of how good it is. Um, but for now, I've been running the three copies and it seems to be working fine. But yeah, this is a really good card for this deck because you really need the resources. Next up, uh, grade three that you, I'm not going to be running in Bastion. This is Divine Sister Lepisto. When your drive check reveals a trigger, you can blast two and you stand it and it gets 5k. So this card can be really helpful because multi-attacking is good. And if you know there's a trigger on your deck, you just swing, set up, you know, the trigger's coming, kind of blast and stand it. So it's good. Um, the kind blast two is really heavy. So I don't, you know, really feel like it's going to stick around for that long in the near future. But uh, as far as hex orb support, this is this is pretty much as good as it gets. Next up, grade twos. These are the only grade twos in the whole deck because the rest are all grade threes. Um, it was the grade two from the right deck. So Pentagleam Sorceress, when it's placed on rear guard circle, you can look at the top card. Put it on the top or bottom, and if you put it on the bottom, it gets 2k. So just simple, on place. It's a free look at top card. If it's triggered, keep it on top. If not, put it on the bottom. So simple filtering like that. Um, I just wish we had more cards like this for the deck because that's kind of as much filtering as the deck goes with, or if, even if it was just kind of like on attack, you filter. But the fact that it's just on place and it's done, it's a vision left for the rest of the game, it's kind of whatever. So that was it for grade twos. On to the grade ones. We got four copies of our PG from the booster set. So it's uh, when this is placed on the guard circle, choose one of your units, and it cannot be hit until the end of that battle. And if your hand has two or more cards, you choose a card from your hand and discard it. So uh, if it's, it's basically like Brave. You know, you put it down. If it's the you got one card left in hand, you know, you, you don't have to discard, which is really nice. Uh, Really great PG design overall. So, good card. Definitely get those PGs if you can. They're rares now, so should make it easier to find. Should, keyword. All right, four copies of Design Sister Tartine, or Tartine. Um, this is the other card that helps filter. Uh, it's when it's placed on rear, you soul less one, rest it. Look at the top two cards. Put uh, one card from the top of your deck on yeah, you know, choose one card from among them, put it on the top, the other card goes to the bottom. Um, it kind of sucks that you do have to rest it, though, because I don't really understand why Hex Orb is going to lose out on those boosts. I get it, maybe if you run it in Bastion and you just get to keep the booster, maybe it seems a little strong, but I don't know why you need the rest. If there's something I'm missing, let me know. Um, but just on place, filter... And then you still get to keep the booster for the next turn, so I guess, you know, stuck on the board as a vanilla is not too bad. But that's it for the filtering support, which kind of sucks. So you really got to time this when you need to and not just throw it down whenever. So the rest of the grade one pool is kind of whatever. Um, so I decide I'm just going to run four copies of this thing. Uh, Knight of Heavenly Wind Vatchel. The other options were the Grade 1 Battle Sister that, uh, oh, I think I got them right over here, um, and the Tear Square Sorceress, but um, I just really wasn't finding myself using their skills as often, so I decided I might as well take a 10k booster and take advantage of that to hit numbers. So this is when it boosts, it gets 2k. Really simple. So it's literally just a 10k, 8k booster. So you put it behind Van, your source, Hex or Sorceress now hits for 23 Put it behind a rear guard, you know, and you just hit numbers. Makes sense, right? Um, I kind of mentioned earlier, moving these aside for a second, that if you want, you can run main deck tier square sorceress if you want to be able to use that second skill to choose an opponent's front row, put them the bottom of the deck to kind of get rid of um, overdress units for free. Um, so that'd be pretty much it. So if you're going to go to a, like a tournament 
and you feel like you're going to see a lot of Irina decks, just run this at four, and then that way when you get a trigger, you just boom, send them back to the bottom, and then that's getting rid of the unit for free. Um, the other option that I had for the greed ones was running this, the Divine Sister Faciata. So it's once a turn when you dread check reveals a trigger, you soul blast to counter charge. My only issue with this is that you do soul blast a lot when it comes to cards like Aiden, uh, Hexor, Hexor, the Battle Sister, this one, Soul Blast. So there's not a lot of soul charge other than the grade three that when it hits, you can soul charge counter charge. So I really didn't know if this was really worth it, especially since just counter charge one. If it was counter charge two, yeah, totally. Definitely run this, but it doesn't really seem worth it. I'd rather just get a booster out of it. Um, and as far as the control aspect, like, I guess, you know, you can kind of go two and two if you want to. But uh, as of for right now, since I don't really feel like I'm going to be making this like a competitive, like a super tournament competitive deck and try and get first place, um, I'm just going to stick with the 10k boosters. So next up for grade ones, this card is actually really good, but only running it at three. I'm running Painkiller Angel. It's at the end of the battle that it boosted, Soul Blast Run, retire it, and you can draw a card. So it's a simple boost, Soul Blast, draw, and you can go through your deck and get more hand out of it. So yeah, might as well. Um, the deck doesn't surprisingly draw a lot. It just kind of filters for triggers. So you do have to take advantage of the drawing. And also it's just a really decent skill for a grade one. So uh, you could run four. I feel like that would be a good option. Take out one of these, run another one, a copy of these. But I am being kind of conscious about soul. So if I'm going to throw down a vanilla, I don't want to kind of just throw down something that's just 8k and then use the skill later. Might as well hit some decent numbers since we're just getting into the start of this new format. So yeah, personal choice there. All right, that was it for grade ones. We are now on to the trigger units. Starting off, we got our over trigger light dragon deity of honors. How you pronounce this? Armartinoa? Armartinoa? Armartinoa. So over trigger, when this is revealed, you remove it and you draw a card and you choose one of your units and it gets 10 million power. <laughs> it's, it's just still funny. Or sorry, 10 million. 100 million power it gets. 100 million power. It's great. Um, and if you revealed it during a drive check, you get the additional effect, which is... Uh, until the end of your turn, your rear guards also perform drive checks. So that's cool because you have grade three front rows. So you over you swing a van over trigger. Now your front row grade threes have twin drive. So really good. Um, yeah, over triggers are are a, a fun game mechanic. All right, next up for the rest of triggers, uh, we're running eight crits. So we got four from the trial deck and four from the booster set. So since Hex Orb lets you put triggers back on top of your deck or crit triggers in up front, um, you want to run crits and you want to crit your opponent to death because this deck basically needs to do the whole crit to win kind of thing. And if you're not critting to win, you're going to kind of fall behind and um, you want to kind of push damage ASAP. So definitely want to run eight crits. You have those crits in your hand, dealing those damage, pressuring your opponent, etc. All right, next up, I'm running two draws, just for space reasons, and then also the one front, since Hexorb does let you put a front back on top, I might as well run one, you know. So, like, if your opponent's already at five damage, and you're like, damn, I just need to push numbers, you can use Hexorb. If you if you Persona Road, uh, put it back on the top of your deck, and then your opponent knows you have a front, so they have to deal with that. And then if you have the grade three that restands itself, you can get four attacks with the front, which is nice. Uh, the draws are just there because drawing and hand power and damage triggering draw triggers is good. So yeah, draw triggers are good. But uh, there's not a lot of space for triggers really to work at this deck. And then lastly, the four heals. Uh, heals got nerfed. They're 15k instead of 20k now, which kind of sucks because they didn't really do anything else. Uh, but yeah, it's just kind of like the, the weakest trigger in terms of aggressiveness, but it's a heal, so it'll, uh, it'll save you. Gotta run four of those. 
right. That was it for the main deck. Um, yeah, that that was it for the deck. <laughs> so I'm not really sure how I can really spin this to make this deck feel like it's fun or viable. Uh, I just might have some personal disjointment playing this deck, and I feel like since um, there seems to be like a lot of lack of support for Hexor Sorceress, um, it does feel kind of disappointing for players that do want to get into playing this variant of the deck. So I apologize to all the Hexor Sorceress players, but if you do want to play Keter Sanctuary and you are on a budget and you don't want to play the Bastion build, um, you have this, and I don't know if this is going to be any different of a price difference since a lot of the units seem to be shared or not that hard to get. And also, I feel like Bastion uses a lot of the trial deck cards too. So, and, all, and a lot of the other grade threes are just kind of rares or double R's, so it should be kind of easy to kind of get your hands on those. But overall, Hexorb is a deck that exists, and... Um, that, that's that's about as much as I can say about it. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. If you have any uh, ideas or concepts for me to help improve this deck, I would love to hear about it because I, own, I have the deck. I might as well make it good, right? And um, yeah, leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.